Welcome back, everybody. Hope everybody had a great weekend out there. We got an active video here for you guys today. We do have a lot of active weather here in the tropics from the eastern Pacific into the Gulf and even into the Atlantic here as well as the Atlantic especially starts to heat up here the next several days. Also looking at a series of cold fronts dropping in here out of Canada across portions of the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and into the Ohio Valley. And then we'll also be looking at another major heat wave here with kind of ridge riding uh, kind of effects on uh, the northern periphery of that heat wave here with more storms as we head towards the July 4th weekend and beyond. So welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Monday morning out there. A new start to the work week. We got to, here, we'll start with the tropics here as we have a lot of active weather across the eastern Pacific, the Gulf, and the Atlantic. We'll start in the eastern Pacific here where we have tropical storm Celia continuing to kind of spin across portions off the Baja of California. This will weaken to a tropical depression here as we head into tomorrow and even in toward the middle of the week here. So this will still, uh, you know, stay over open waters and be kind of a nuisance over the open waters as well as it starts to weaken. The National Hurricane Center is also monitoring another area here of about a 20 to nearly a 30 percent chance here of, you know, the next five days here of becoming another system just to the south and east here of Celia. Um, so we'll have to watch that. Generally a low probability for that right now, but something to definitely watch in the coming days. And looking kind of at the, cli uh, the climatology across the eastern Pacific, we really start to ratchet up the intensity here of the, uh, you know, the frequency of the storms, the tropical storms, the tropical depression and those hurricanes and even those major hurricanes here across the eastern Pacific Basin as we head towards the start of July and really starts to peak as we towards as we head towards the middle of summer and even towards the fall months. So we're really starting to get into that time frame here where the eastern Pacific is really starting to heat up out there. Kind of looking more into the Gulf here as well, we do have another 20 to 30% chance here of another development here across portions of the Gulf, right off the Texas coast here. We could have some heavier rainfall, especially across portions here of Houston, getting over toward Lake Charles, maybe even portions here of New Orleans as well, here off coastal Texas, Corpus Christi, all of these areas could have some very heavy rainfall. And then looking to the east here across the southern uh, portions of the Atlantic Basin, getting down here into portions of the, Car uh, the, the Caribbean, getting in towards Central America, we have two areas here of interest. We got one that has a 90% chance here of development the next five days, kind of steering its way westward towards the uh, portions of the Southern Caribbean, getting towards Central America. That one could develop into a tropical storm or even a hurricane potentially here as we head through the next several days. And then here, the uh, National Hurricane Center is also highlighting another area of investigation here toward the Lesser Antilles here and the Windward Islands as well over the next five days here with some, you know, activity across that area with a wave that here is uh, right on its heels um, coming off of Africa across portions of the southern Atlantic. Looking at that kind of the Gulf system, we have a low pressure system developing here and it will kind of spin across portions here off the coast here of Texas and Louisiana. A lot of heavy rain can be expected across these areas here from Corpus Christi up through Houston, Lake Charles, and then getting down toward portions of New Orleans as well, maybe even back toward Mobile, Alabama. We do have kind of that coastal system where we have the very heavy rains here along the coast. Uh, you know, you have a lot of pavement here in Houston, so if you, even if you have just a couple inches of rain, we could have a lot of runoff here with this. Looking at the uh, Europeans' run here over the next few days here, uh, the next week or so with the rainfall, most of the rain on the European run here shows that off the coast here, offshore here in the portions of Texas, offshore of portions here of Louisiana, but generally along the Corpus Christi areas here, down towards South Texas, getting up towards Southeast Texas here toward Houston, and then getting into South Central portions there, Louisiana toward New Orleans, Lake Charles, those areas here could especially see maybe a couple inches of rain of around one to three inches. Now looking at the GFS's run here of the same time frame here as well, we have a little bit more of that rainfall pushing a little farther inland here into South Southeast Texas around the Houston area, uh, Corpus Christi here with a little less rainfall across South Texas, around the Corpus Christi Houston area, seeing here rainfall amounts approaching four, five inches here across those areas, and then a little higher rainfall amounts getting into portions of Mississippi up toward the Jackson area, getting down here towards portions of New Orleans, uh, Lake Charles, getting back toward portions of Mobile, Alabama as well with more of that rainfall more inland on that GFS's run here as well. 
And you can see that here, the kind of the, uh, you know, the low pressure system developing on the here, the Texas coast as we head into your Wednesday evening here, um, the middle of the week. We also are watching that system here that has a 90% chance here of development over the next few days across portions of the Southern Caribbean here, getting towards the Lesser Antilles. This is going to be moving westward towards portions of the Central America. And you can see it on the vorticity signature here, some pretty nice spin here with this system as we head toward the middle of the week on your Wednesday. And this will start to shift more westward here on the Europeans run of the you know the vorticity signature as we head towards that Thursday and even the Friday time period potentially strengthening to a stronger tropical storm maybe even a hurricane as it kind of moves toward portions here of Central America during that period as we head towards this uh, upcoming weekend into your Friday evening maybe even Saturday morning. Now looking at the GFS's run, this is a little slower in the timing here, but it does give you kind of the general big picture of where this system looks to head. We have here kind of the vorticity signature showing up around here, the Windward Islands, the Lesser Antilles here on your, the middle of the week on your Wednesday, and then starting to shift its way to the west here as we head towards your uh, Thursday, Friday time period, and then really strengthens it. The GFS here strengthens this system a lot further than the European does here as well, and it kind of a little slower as well with the system here as it moves towards Central America during the next weekend's time frame. And then it does come on shore uh, potentially as a hurricane across Central America on the GFS's run as we head into your Saturday evening. So it's kind of a day behind the European run. So we'll still have uh, you know some timing issues to work out here, but it does give you kind of the general flavor that there, you know, there is agreement that in Central America here as we head towards late this week and into the, you know, the 4th of July weekend for the United States, we definitely have the potential um, of a, you know, landfalling system across the Central American coast as we head here in towards this weekend. So that is definitely something to watch. And looking kind of at the origin points here from July 1st through the 10th period, we start to have more of these origin points lining up across portions of the southern, you know, the southern Atlantic Basin getting into the Caribbean here, as well as in the Gulf of Mexico as well, off the coast here of the Carolinas. A lot more of these origin points here as well, and off the coast here of Mexico and the western uh, Central American coast here as well, and with more storms developing across the eastern Pacific Basin as well. But generally looking at the Atlantic Basin here, we really start to ratchet up the intensity here in the frequency of the storms as we head towards the, you know, the early to mid portion here of July, and it really starts to take off as we head toward August and September. So we're still well ahead of that peak season here for hurricanes and tropical storms and all of that here across the Atlantic Basin. But I do promise you things are really starting to heat up in a big way across those areas. Now looking back to the U.S. Uh, the contiguous U United States here, the U.S. mainland. We do have a couple more uh, cold fronts coming through. We got another system here coming through with a cold front. As we head through here the rest of the, uh, the day today across the south and east, high pressure building in here across portions of the Midwest into the Great Lakes, a lot of sunshine, a lot of cooler weather behind that front here as well. So some pleasant conditions here for your Monday. And that is, you know, signaled here on the National Weather Service's high temperatures forecast for today. You can see temperatures rising well into the 70s, even some mid 80s here, so, but some drier 80s here. These mid 80s will be here with an absence of low level moisture. So kind of some of the drier weather those drier 80s across the Dakotas, getting into Nebraska, western Iowa, portions of western and southwestern Minnesota. All that heat will start to build across portions here of the west coast and continue as we head through the week, the, you know, the early portion of this week with lots of 100s across the portions here of California, getting into Nevada, portions of Washington State, getting down toward Oregon State, even southwestern portions there of Idaho as well. As you get down towards Death Valley and portions here of Phoenix, temperatures will be rising to that 105 to that 115 mark and then you have ahead of that front here across the Gulf Coast and the southeast all those 90s here ahead of that front but as we kind of move it through towards the middle of the week we have another cold front starting to take shape across the northern plains and across the you know the central and northern uh, Great Lakes region and that will uh, ahead of that cold front we could have some energy building once again and that's why the Storm Prediction Center's Day 2 outlook shows a marginal risk here across portions of uh, Montana and then getting across central portions of Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, far northeastern Iowa. This does include portions here of Green, <clears throat> excuse me, of Green Bay, getting in here to portions of Wisconsin Dells, getting down here towards uh, Rochester as well, Minnesota, and then getting down over toward the La Crosse area here as well as we head into your Tuesday. 
And you can see that here on the composite reflectivity here of the NAM 3KM model. You can see some showers and storms developing across central and western Montana here as we head towards late in the afternoon and evening hours here on your Tuesday. Also along that cold front here from portions of northern and central Wisconsin getting down towards southeastern portions there of Minnesota, far northeastern Iowa. And this will start to shift its way to the south and east. But as it does so here, we're going to start to lose the instability as we head towards your Tuesday evening into the overnight hours on Tuesday. So this will kind of be a shorter event, uh, you know, duration for portions here of the Great Lakes and also into portions of Montana as well, as we have a lot of kind of, uh, you know, less instability that's go around with that cool down here with that first uh, cold front that's still kind of hanging around the Gulf Coast. Not a lot of instability here. So not looking at a huge severe weather threat, but something to keep an eye on is we could have a couple of storms, you know, one or two storms that could get a little feisty here across portions of Wisconsin and as well up into portions of Montana. And that'll kind of continue to kind of fade away as we head into your Wednesday morning. And then as we head towards your, you know, uh, your, you know, early Friday morning, that cold front will start to shift down to the south here. Another cold front dropping down here from Canada. And along and ahead of that, we got a lot of daytime heating here. We got temperatures rising well into the 90s again, starting to heat up across the middle Mississippi Valley, getting into the portions of the Midwest over toward the Ohio Valley. We got some more 100s here starting to show up from Kansas down through Oklahoma into northwest Texas here. And then as this cold front starts to drop southward here, as we head towards your Friday, July 1st, kind of opening day here of July, we start having another refreshing cool down here once again for portions of the Dakotas back through Minnesota into Wisconsin here. And then all that heat ahead of that front here with some storms as we head into the start of the uh, July 4th holiday weekend. But then even as you head towards Saturday, July 2nd, we have another refreshing cool down here. Some drier 80s here with some low, you know, dew points across these areas, making for some pleasant conditions from the Midwest up through the Northern Plains, the Great Lakes, and then kind of over towards the you know, parts of the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast, kind of taking a break from the extremely high heat across portions of the Southern Plains into the Gulf Coast, but still going to be pretty hot for areas here, you know, mid to upper 90s still into Texas, maybe some lower 100s down into far Southern Texas, and then 100s again over towards Phoenix here and towards Death Valley as well as we head towards that Saturday, July 2nd time frame. Also kind of looking at this here with the DFS, not showing a lot of, you know, forcing along this cold front. It's a pretty weak front, so we're not seeing a lot of instability grow. So we're, it's, most of these areas won't see much rainfall here. It'll kind of come through with kind of a nuisance with some showers and storms. Yes, you may have a couple of stronger storms as you head into that Thursday, Friday time frame, but I'm not expecting anything here too intense. We do have that monsoon, though, however, continuing across portions of the Four Corners, getting in towards uh, Colorado there. That is some welcome news here as the drought does continue across the those areas but largely with this cold front across portions of the middle of the country we're not expecting too much rainfall into early portions of this upcoming weekend and it generally looking at the next four to five days here all the way through the rest of this week and getting into the start of the july 4th weekend you can expect some more rainfall here with the monsoon across portions of uh, new mexico getting into southern colorado here with maybe upwards of about an inch inch and a quarter here in spots with kind of the atmospheric river continuing here to pump in from portions here of western uh, Mexico into the Four Corners. We also have that stronger low with all that rainfall here and the tropical rains across the coastal Texas, getting down through coastal Louisiana, coastal portions here of the Gulf Coast, all the way from Texas, all the way over towards Florida here as well, with the heaviest rains here expected from Corpus Christi up through Houston, Lake Charles, and getting, kind of getting over towards portions of New Orleans as well, where we could have rainfall amounts of about two to four plus inches potentially along the immediate coast there from Texas towards uh, Louisiana and Mississippi over the next five days. And then as we look here towards July 4th itself and then beyond, toward the middle of July, another kind of uh, interesting feature is uh, starting to arise in a lot of the model runs here lately. And it's been pretty consistent. The Climate Prediction Center's uh, 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from July 4th through the 10th shows above average temperatures across much of Texas, getting into Oklahoma, into portions here of the Gulf Coast, and then some building heat across portions of the central and northern plains and into the portions of the Missouri Valley as well, where we have a trough starting to dig in here across portions of the West Coast. You can expect here some below normal temperatures from portions of Washington down through Oregon, Nevada, and California, and then another kind of trough meandering across the northeast as well, kind of near normal to slightly below normal temperature-wise during that July 4th through July 10th time frame. 
but we do have an active jet stream as we head into portions of southern Canada, the northern plains, the Pacific Northwest, and then kind of diving down here to the south and east across the Midwest and the Great Lakes, and then getting over toward the Mid-Atlantic along the northern and northeastern periphery of that heat wave, we can expect some active storms potentially setting up between that July 4th to July 10th time frame, so that is something to watch. And this is the climate forecasting systems model. As we head towards that first, you know, the end of that first week here of July, heading into, you know, that Wednesday, July 5th, 6th time frame, we can expect some instability to start growing here on the northern periphery of this heat wave into portions of the Dakotas, getting into Minnesota, portions here of Nebraska, into Iowa here as well, but really start to amplify, really start to build the energy, the instability across the Midwest here into the middle, uh, middle Missouri Valley, getting over toward the western Great Lakes as we head towards that 6th, 7th, and 8th time frame here of July, and we'll really have to keep an eye on this here as we do have the potential for some stronger storms across this area here as well. Um, as some of the ensemble guidance, this is the GEPS here showing the, all that heat building all the way through portions here of Texas into Oklahoma, into Kansas, and into Nebraska here, all the way up into southern Canada. And they have that jet stream pulling all the way uh, to the north here from portions of the Pacific Northwest, all the way into southern Canada here, and then kind of diving down around this ridge. And this ridge, as it holds strong all the way through that first week or so here of July into the middle of July, will really start to amplify this jet stream here stronger, you know, westerlies and northwesterly winds here in the jet streams in the mid and upper levels and that'll really start to enhance that storm track as we head towards that time frame here we, we, you can see on the ensemble guidance some stronger anomalies showing up here in the jet stream here does indicate maybe some organized storms if they can get together we could have the potential here of some mcs's maybe even derechos cannot be ruled out here as this climatologically is actually looking favorable for more progressive derechos as you have that strong high pressure system across portions of the central and southern plains and the southeast you have more of that progressive flow here the airflow in the mid and upper levels around the outer edge here, the northern and northeastern periphery of that here across the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and then getting over toward the Great Lakes. And kind of looking at this in July, we have this starting into May, we have the duration season starting at 22% here with the frequency, and then kind of dropping off a little bit here into June. But as we get into July, kind of that second season of derechos, that kind of the ratio second season, if you will, and that will be something to watch here as we head towards the middle of July, as this really starts to favor here the areas that are climatologically favorable for derechos during that July time frame here from portions of Minnesota, Iowa, and then ground zero across southern Wisconsin, north central Illinois, and then getting down here into northern Indiana and portions of Ohio. And that kind of kind of goes along with what this high pressure system here is kind of setting its you know setting its ways at here kind of anchoring its way down towards the central and southern plains you have all that airflow progressively around that periphery of that heat wave and that's kind of here in the same climatological area so we definitely have to watch that and i will do so here uh moving forward here the next several days to kind of keep an eye on that so that was a lot to get through here. Uh, do be sure to like my video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave comments, questions below. I'll answer your questions here as soon as I possibly can. And also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel here as I'm trying to hit 200 subscribers. So please help me out. Tell family, friends. Turn all your notifications on as well with all the severe weather coming up. Uh, potentially in all that tropical weather here as well as it gets closer to the United States. I'll be doing more live streams here as well. So turn your notifications on for that as, a, here, as you head into the July 4th time frame and beyond as things look to start getting very active. So everybody have a great day out there and I hope to see you as you head into Tuesday morning as well.